My name is uh, Dr. Thomas Brott. I'm a professor of neurology at the Mayo Clinic. I'm the principal investigator of the Crest trial, and the results of the Crest trial were published in the New England Journal online uh, last week and will be published in their print version July 1st. The Crest trial was designed to compare the safety and effectiveness of carotid stenting, which is a less invasive method of treating uh, carotid artery disease, compared to the traditional carotid surgery. The design was to randomize 2,500 patients to receive either the carotid stenting or the carotid surgery, and then to follow the patients for the occurrence of stroke, or myocardial infarction or death following the operation, and then after the operation to check the two procedures with regard to how well they prevented stroke. Well, our primary endpoint in Crest was that occurrence. You know, the safety endpoint was death, stroke, or heart attack at the time of the stenting or the operation, and then following the patients thereafter for the occurrence of stroke on the side of the uh, carotid artery with the disease. And for that primary outcome measure, the two procedures were almost identical, not statistically different. The two procedures were similar overall, but there were differences in the components of that primary outcome. So for example, the patients who underwent stenting had fewer heart attacks at the time of the procedure. And the patients who received the carotid operation, carotid surgery, they had fewer strokes at the time of the procedure. The differences for those two procedures in the heart attack rate and the stroke rate balanced out altogether, so the two were similar overall. Yes, the minor strokes and the major strokes, for the most part, were seen early on at the time of the procedure. But we were very pleased in that both groups, the stent group and the surgery group, had the lowest rate of stroke that's ever been reported in a large study like this. So both procedures were as safe as either has ever been shown to be previously. Minor stroke in some circumstances could be debris, but usually um, the debris that, for instance, we've seen with MRI scans of the brain after these procedures, usually those areas are smaller uh, injuries to the brain than would produce symptoms that we would uh, call minor stroke. So probably rather than very small particles or particulate debris, we're probably talking about larger particles uh, to, the, to the degree that we're dealing with smaller blood clots, uh, pieces of atherosclerotic material that are uh, large enough to block an artery inside the brain. Well, of course, we're looking at all of that, and uh, we have uh, information on all of that because we have the enzymes and we have the EKGs, but we haven't reported that yet. Uh, I can't say prior to that report that the strokes, fortunately, tended to be small, and the heart attacks, fortunately, also tended to be small. And this is another change from studies carried out previously. Well, the data from the ICSS, the, uh, the UK study for the, for the large part, uh, I think reflected uh, the impact of experience. Their rates of stroke were higher, but the patients who were stented, uh, you know, underwent their stents by stenters who were not really experienced compared to the stenters in our study. I think the MRI sub-study they had, you know, where they did MRI scans of a certain proportion uh, of the brains after the procedure also tended to confirm this, that in fact the stented patients uh, had debris, had small clots that were probably broken off at the time of the operation. More commonly in older people with tortuous blood vessels and a lot of calcium. So I think that uh, the experience and skill of the stenters played a role.
Well, this trial is the largest ever done, and it's unique in that it, it gives us guidance for both sets of patients, and, and that is the patients who have symptoms ahead of time or stroke warning signs. And we had trials for those patients, but not in the United States. And now also we have information on patients without symptoms, the asymptomatic patients, and none of the previous trials included those patients. So the guidance for those two groups. First, for the symptomatic patients. Fortunately, both the surgery patients and the stent patients had the best safety ever reported. Uh, and the results for both groups were below the guidelines that we use today in practice. So under those guidelines, both procedures are acceptable to prevent stroke in patients with carotid disease and symptoms. The bottom line for patients without symptoms, the asymptomatic patients, is similar. The results were excellent, better than ever reported for both procedures. Uh, carotid surgery had the edge with regard to stroke during the operative period, and I think has a little bit of an edge overall, given that I think stroke's a little bit more important to the patient than, than his heart attack. But the safety for both were excellent, so that, for instance, if a patient, for one reason or another, or their family, doesn't wish to undergo surgery, clearly carotid stenting was shown to be a safe alternative.